Well, welcome everybody. Um, this is an exciting 2023 student showcase and uh, really bringing on board a whole lot of uh, fantastic uh, folks who have experience in the industry to review and uh, give comment to your uh your entries this is uh this has been how many years is this nathan this this is year number three yeah so it, it's continued to grow and and students are seeing great value from it so we're just thrilled that everybody's uh, uh feeling the the value and desiring to come and be part of this um as you can tell from our panelists there's uh continued interest in uh building up and sharing with uh, the next generation who are going to take this industry into uh, e even greater and and um, more exciting heights uh, into the future. So we're thrilled to get this started. Um, I uh, Should I get started, Nathan? Should we? Yeah, let's go ahead and get off? started. All right. Yep. Awesome. Well, uh, here you are. You did it. You came you made it onto a Zoom call. There are multiple people, especially from our uh, our panelists, who uh, are on their way to Spain or to uh, the uh, to Sate Europe. There's all kinds of stuff going on uh, around the industry right now on this day. Uh, this was the day we had the uh, critical mass of the most of our panelists available. So we wanted to give you an opportunity today to meet them, to connect with them, and prepare for uh, the time ahead as we um, as we begin the the process. Uh, Nate uh, has jumped in on the comments uh, at the bottom. Um, please do use the the chat as as we go along. We'd love to jump on some questions as as you have an opportunity. Um, and uh, any information you think we need to know. Uh, you can also raise your hand with the reactions at the bottom. We'll want, keep an eye out for that to uh, give you an opportunity to ask questions as we go. I wanna uh, kick off starting with uh, Peter Weisher. We're excited to have him uh, on board uh, to talk about the academic society and the uh, themed entertainment uh, 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 student showcase. Um, and uh, just congratulations for a recent award uh, with the uh, Peter Chernak Distinguished Service Award, um, which we're applauding um, recently. So, Peter, would you take it away and uh, talk about the Academic Society? Sure. Um, in, in the last couple of years, we've, um, we've been able to kind of feature some of the, the work there for, at the Academic Society uh, Symposium. So I and a, a few other academics started the themed experience and attractions academic society. It's going into a seventh year now. We're going next year, we're gonna have our sixth symposium, which is held at the final day of the IAPA Expo in Orlando, which is usually mid November. Um, and we get about, um, we had well over a hundred people at the last symposium. Uh, Nate was uh, and, uh, was one of the sponsors of the breakfast and talked about the uh, the uh, the student showcase and we were able to show some of the showcase show some of the student showcase work up on the screen there uh, during the symposium as well. Uh, but you're all welcome to join the academic society as students, especially as faculty as well. Um, we do more than just the symposium. We have an academic journal. We do a lot of communication and the idea of the academic society is to bring people like us together who are looking to study this and, and, and further the field. So appreciate the opportunity to participate in this. Awesome. Well, and now I wanna introduce Nathan Naverson who uh, uh, kind of kicked off a lot of this, the, pa the passionate uh, pusher behind all of this thing, moving things down the line and uh, gathering relationships, friendships, and uh, professionals to come together to uh, work on this project together. So, Nathan, would you uh, jump in and talk to us about the basics of the student showcase? Yeah, and if I could just give a little plug, if you guys uh, in industry have not been to the uh, TEAAS, the symposium, uh, it's fantastic. Um, last day of IAPA, it's a good way to sit down for a while. <laughs> and, uh, and and here's some really interesting speeches and then also helps build that bridge. This is one of our intentions is to build the bridge between uh, the corporate world and academia. So 
Um, if, if you're at a JRA or, or wh whatever company you are with, um, I'd encourage you to check it out. Um, the cost is minimal. I think it's like $40 and it includes breakfast and, and then you get the whole the whole day of some interesting speeches and, and they'd love to hear from you. So um, with the, uh, let me just make sure real quick that I'm not, okay. Um, so the goal uh, going back here is to connect uh, students especially, and, and students are feeling this right now where it's uh, it's the end of April, it's the beginning of May, they've been told their entire life <laughs> what to do. And I'm sure you can relate to this, but you, you're you about a month from graduating or maybe a few weeks, and you don't know what you're going to do. You send that resume off into cyberspace and you hear absolutely nothing. Uh, the goal for a lot of designers is just to get in front of somebody to uh, get your resume reviewed by someone. And in this case, uh, we are basically forcing the issue by introducing <laughs> you to people who are, are are required to look at your work and, and potentially connect with you. And then uh, what you can do, of course, and this is what I would encourage you to do, is to go around and introduce yourselves to every one of the panelists that are, are in this um, showcase uh, go meet them at, at IAPA. And if you're too scared, if you're just nervous, don't know how to do it, how to introduce yourself, uh, hit me up and I will take you around and we'll go around together. We'll go shake some hands. So that way you can make some meaningful connections. And of course, companies need good people too. And uh, everyone had that hand that was given to them, that helping hand. And I think that's part of the reason that we're all here. It's because we all have that heart to help the next generation. So um, they're here for your benefit, so take advantage uh, for sure. So real quick, um, the registration deadline is on May 15th. You still have a couple weeks to register. Um, in order to register, and I want to go back through this just so that we, we make it clear, you have to do two things. I want to say that because some people have only done one thing. Uh, number one is you're going to create an account um, on themedattraction.com for yourself and every member in your team. Uh, what that does is that... Um, uh, creates, you have to agree to the terms of service, basically saying, hey, you know, we're doing, you know, in order to get access to these, these panelists, uh, we're not going to sue anyone when someone's idea looks exactly like ours, that sort of thing. Um, but also, uh, it, it just, it, it allows you to interact and, and post your information. So that's number one, uh, create an account. But number two is um, make sure that you fill out the registration form on the bottom of the a registration and details page. So I'm looking at it right now. If if you see, I posted the link in the chat. Um, at the bottom of that, you will see there is the list of all 20 current uh, individual reg registrations and six team registrations. So um, if you don't see your name on that list, you might have forgotten the steps. So the form is at the bottom of the page. Make sure that you submit that. So the uh, registration window uh, closes on the 15th of May. And then you will have exactly two weeks uh, from May 15th to the 31st to upload all your documents. And at that point, basically your work is done. Um, with that said, I'm gonna send two things to you. Number one, I'm gonna send you a video on how to upload all of your information. And number two, uh, I'm gonna give you my contact information so that you don't have to become a webmaster. You can basically just, you know, you can reach out to me. I'll help you get all of your documents online. And that way you can put together a good presentation. Now, uh, deliverables. One, one, a couple things that we don't want to see. Uh, number one is we don't want to just see a link. Uh, everyone's got a, you know, a, an online portfolio these days, and we're, we don't, you know, we're creating a showcase on this platform, and that's part of the deliverable task. And that is basically we're not going to say this is my project here, go over here. Uh, but what you are going to do is is create it on on the uh, on what's essentially a WordPress platform. And uh, you can then create uh, supporting documents saying, this is how we got here. This is all of our pages. Here's the, uh, here's the basic pitch deck that we're providing, but the, uh, all the supporting materials, all the reference drawings, everything else that we came up with is going to be over here on that location. That's perfectly fine. Um, the second thing with, that we don't want to see, and MK can answer more about this later also, uh, is uh, someone else's IP. So I'll give you an example. We saw a registration there for a James and the Giant Peach project. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Um, there's two exceptions for this. Um, number one is if it's uh, assigned coursework. So for example, if one of the professors had said, we are going to do, we're gonna retheme the Splash Mountain ride. And all the, the students are gonna come up with 
something that that fulfills that goal. At that point, IP is fair game because that's part of um, assigned student coursework. The second thing that you could do is also um, if it's if it's uh, public domain, that's perfectly fine. For example, Peter Pan is perfectly fine because that you know Disney did make a Peter Pan movie, but that's a public domain IP. So keep that in mind. Um, last thing on deliverables, it's really anything that you need to do to communicate your message. And and this, as a professional going into the field, you are going to have to learn how to communicate and and convince someone that your idea is a good one. And so we're leaving it up to you. Some people will create videos. Some people will just do drawings. And, and that's perfectly fine, by the way. If you're an artist and you just want to show your sketches, perfectly acceptable to just put your sketches up there. Um, but it's an opportunity to tell your story. Hey, I'm a first year student. I'm from France. This is my third language. One, you know, I'm speaking in my second language, so I'm doing my best. So I just want to communicate what I'm trying to express here, which is this idea for this new sign that goes in theme parks. So whatever that is, tell your story and then communicate your message and do that in a in in a manner that that judges can um, uh, uh, digest without getting overwhelmed. Um, the next thing I want to say is, and this is really important for you guys, is that this is not Shark Tank and it's also not American Idol. <laughs> so you will not get torn apart by judges um, or, or panelists. We're trying to get away from the word judges. Um, that's a scary thing. Um, but uh, you're not going to get torn apart. Torn apart. Uh, the goal is to be encouraged by these folks. So they're going to give you the good. And, and sometimes you know, the bad news is is what you need. I took a couple of licks when I was in college and, and it was exactly what I needed to do to pick myself up after crying for a night and saying, <laughs> you know, how can I, how can I get better next time? And, and, you know, by gosh, I, I absolutely did get better and did not get burned on the next one. But that being said, the goal is not to make you feel bad. It, it's to encourage you um, to give you ideas to make your next project better. Um, to polish up your presentation skills and just basically to encourage you and to give you someone that you can connect with. So it's hopefully going to be a positive interaction with, with the, uh, the panelists all around. Um, so now here's where it gets interesting that the judges, the panelists are going to have 30 days to score and all the results will be posted on the 4th of July, there, thereabouts. We're going to have five categories we did things differently last year. We're going to do things differently this year. Here's what's going to happen. You are going to be able to submit your project to one of five categories. Um, and the categories, uh, Jesse Cam, who's about to talk, will um, basically uh, detail out what those are. But the idea is to help you, um, if, if you are an architect and not an artist, it's going to help uh, level the playing field. So if you're an engineer, and you do really good electrical drawings, you're not going to be penalized. You're going to be um, uh, helped out in the area of expertise that you personally have. So uh, tech, uh, currently, we have master planning and placemaking. Uh, that's the first category. Use of technology, storytelling, show writing, and guest experience. Um, the fourth one would be concept art, computer graphics, and illustration. And the fifth one is sort of a catch-all where it's just innovation. So you can submit any one of your, your your project to any one of these different categories. And the catch here is that if you think that maybe there's not a lot of people that are putting their project in the technology category, maybe you have a better chance at an award. With that being said, we're going to do one overall best in show, and we're going to do five best in category awards for this year. So with that, that said, that's pretty great. much. That's great, Nathan. Thank you. And I know I've been rattling on for a, a lot, a long time, but basically just think about the category that will fit your project the best, that will suit your skills the best, and we'll try to pair you up with the uh, best panelists for your uh, discipline. And with that said, I'm going to turn this over back to you, Freddie, and um, I think we're going to talk to Jesse a little bit about the scoring now yes. a little bit. So next up, we're, we've got Jesse Cam. Uh, I, I, he's my vote for best beard on the panel uh and uh he's gonna walk us through the scoring good friend uh good to see you jesse all right thanks freddie can y'all hear me okay we can but we can't see the beard okay <laughs> i don't know why that is okay how about now <laughs> all right so uh so just like nathan said uh this year in the past we got like a ton of people who submitted towards like 
a creative side. And what we wanted to acknowledge is that there's a whole lot more involved than just that. Uh, it's all kind of related, as you know, but uh, we want you to give a chance to really just say what you're good at and what your program specific skills are. So that's where the five categories come in. So you'll self-identify that. We're going to, I'm going to ask all of the uh, panelists to review based on a series of, of five standard questions across, across all of them, and then some specific questions. Um, and they're going to rate them on a one to five scale with five being the best and one being uh, it needs a lot of improvement. And then you're going to get that feedback. I will accumulate all that data from the uh, panelists on the spreadsheet. And then I'll, uh, I'll put that in a report that we'll send back to you uh, sometime early summer. Uh, so that's kind of the quick and dirty of how it works. I posted in the, uh, the chat the five categories. I'll now pal uh, post the, uh, the, the common uh, sort of judging criteria that they're going to look at. Uh, and then I'm going to give the, the judges a chance to speak into specifics on each discipline because that's their expertise. Brilliant. Thanks, Jesse. Well, uh, let's meet our judges. Uh, our, nay, our, <laughs> our panelists. You know, it's so hard. We, we, we live in this world where uh, shows are set up as juries and judges. Let's have panelists who can speak into rather than put you down or uh, give you your uh, arraignment. So here we go. Uh, our first uh, judge on the list is Greg Andrade. Uh, Greg is an architect and a master planner and a visual artist, and uh, he's going to uh, just introduce himself real quick, and um, you're on, Greg. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, you know, the reason that this is happening is because uh, one of the greatest things about being in the narrative design world, uh, we are world makers. We create places, spaces, and objects and things from story, um, which is like the funnest and most exciting thing to do ever. <laughs> and uh, everyone that does it knows that. And at the same time, because it's such an amazing ride, uh, we're here to help you uh, do it yourself and, and make, a, make a life out of it because it's a lifestyle, it's a life, it's a way of thinking, it's an attitude. Um, it's not just a career or, or a sort of choice about what you want to do. It really becomes something that is part of you. You, you know, everywhere you go, you, your, your mind is on, you know, and you, you have a curiosity and a, a means of digesting the world that's a little bit different uh, than other design disciplines, at least that's my opinion. Um, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've worked with Disney, Universal, Thinkwell, Hedema, like, you know, tons of different companies. But, you know, it's 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 the same tasking, uh, regardless of who you work with. And um, these days, the big guys are farming everything out. So there are lots of satellite companies that you can get in with and learn a lot. And there's no reason to not learn everything. <laughs> yeah. You know, it doesn't. Your first job doesn't have to be your dream job. Just learn, be learning, right? So, um, you know, I'm here to hopefully help you guys along. And uh, and that's my story. That's awesome. Thanks, Greg. Um, he's uh, also professor of narrative design. We love having you on board. Thank you so much. Um, Adam Bizark isn't here, but do we have the video or should we? We actually don't have the video. But okay. uh, if we get the video, it'll, I don't think we're going to have a video. But that being look said, up Adam Adam Bizark. He's a, a award winning writer, creative director, and he's a TEA master of his craft. Uh, Ryan Harmon of Zeit, Zeitgeist. Uh, there he is in his spaceship or time machine, whatever he's using these days. <laughs> uh, Ryan, introduce yourself and uh, share why this is important. Hi guys, I am Ryan Harmon. I am the uh, President and Chief Creative Officer at Zeitgeist Design and Production and also the co-host of the Spirit of the Time Zoomcast with my partner, Joe Lance Cicero, who will speak shortly after. Um, and I think this is really important because I started as a 20-year-old Imagineer uh, in college 
And um, at the time, there were younger people. I know my friend Scott Alt is on here. He joined around the same time I did. There were a handful of us kind of younger people. And then it sort of dried up. And I don't know if people went into video games or what happened, but for probably a solid decade, there were not a lot of younger people entering the themed entertainment industry. And then finally, uh, different schools like the one Greg teaches at uh, were set up. And uh, over the last probably 10 or 15 years, we have been lucky to get some younger people. And um, I'm really excited about this next generation. And because I was mentored and started off very young, I know what it's like. I know what it's like in a world without an internet and without <laughs> the ability to email resumes and stuff. I used to go to the library. I used to package everything up and put it in portfolios and snail mail it to people and all that. So uh, I'm really excited to meet you guys and to see your work. And uh, you know, what I'm looking for, I think is what's relevant today. I, I really keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on everywhere. And uh, I'm looking for what I think audiences today are gonna be interested in, what's going to engage them and what's going to return a uh, profit for the investors. So uh, hopefully you are tapped into the zeitgeist and I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Thanks, Ryan. Uh, so true. I was trying my hand at animating a long time ago and I brought my portfolio full of all my original work to the family guy offices and uh, dropped them off and said, hey, call me. And then I realized I just left all of my original work with a bunch of uh, <laughs> crazy folks and it took me three months to get it back so I could go for jobs. It's so nice to have it digital, isn't it? Um, next up is Terry Brown. I don't see him on here uh, from Forek. Um, I had an opportunity to be up at his offices in Toronto. and Actually, uh, uh, he's coming. Here he is. Oh, is he coming? I'll let him he talk. just came in. Oh, excellent. Terry, your perfect timing. I'm looking for his face or at least there he is connecting to audio. Yeah, we'll give him a second. I'll let him listen to Joe and then he'll know where, where we're going with this. Howdy, Joe, Lance Cicero, uh, share with the folks. Oh, howdy, Fred D. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi to my fellow panelists and to the students. Um, oh, what, what a great thing, what a great opportunity you have here to have all these great minds looking at your work. Um, you know, I, I worked at, at Disney for close to 40 years. Uh, I'm currently working with Ryan uh, at Zeitgeist. Um, I am his co-host on the, the Spirit of the Times uh, Zoomcast that, that he mentioned a moment ago. Um, I think you have an amazing opportunity here because as much as you can study, if you're in, a, in programs, you know, Greg had a great program, many of the, the panelists here, you know, are teaching, and that's great. But this, this industry that you're getting into is so prototypical. You know, most of the things that you will be doing probably have not been done before. If they have been done before, uh, or it's going to be, there's going to be a new take on it, um, probably new technologies available to you, and experience is what these panelists bring to the table. And it's only through experience that you'll really learn what works and what doesn't work. And, um, and you're gonna make a bunch of mistakes along the way, we all did, but now you will benefit from the mistakes that we made along the way. And hopefully we'll be able to give you some advice on what you're doing that you, you know, that's the only place you'll, you'll get it, second to, you know, putting on your boots and getting them dirty when you get that chance to go into the field. So excited to be here, happy to be able to hand off some information along the way with these other great panelists. Thank you, Joe. Uh, really appreciate it. Terry Brown, hello. Uh, you just popped on, but now I'm going to uh, put you on the spot. Uh, you mind introducing yourself and uh, offering a little encouragement to the stu students here. You're on uh, mute at the moment. Thank you, Freddie. Uh, and I'm very sorry to be late. You don't caught up in other things here, but I'm so glad to be here with everyone. Um, what a what an astonishing group I was. Uh, and and I'm uh, I'm. I'm uh, honored uh, to be part of this uh, such a talented and experienced group. 
Um, uh, my name Terry Brown. I'm uh, with the uh, 4EC Limited. Uh, we're a design consultancy in the entertainment world. A lot of theme parks, but also a lot of you know everything from museums to anything that requires interaction, that kind of thing. I'm a creative director. Uh, I think I started life as an architect, but it's so long ago I can actually hardly remember now. And uh, but I've been with 4EC for about uh, 25 years and have so enjoyed um, the sort of cross-fertilization of different design disciplines working together on projects. And that's what really makes me uh, get up in the morning is the association with groups of people on projects, that whole working together thing of people of all experiences and ages and from really different backgrounds and disciplines. Um, really, I'm, I'm now approaching uh, in another year, I'll be 80 years old, and I can tell you I'm as full of fire about how much fun it is to design um, as I ever was. So for all the students, uh, you're opening the doors to a whole beautiful world of, of uh, really fun while you work. So uh, welcome to this world, and I think we're going to um, see some wonderful stuff and really looking forward to it. Great. Thanks, Terry. Really appreciate it. That kind of was a good uh, we kind of could have had a good like uh, conclusion that was that was very well said I was inspired all right uh, moving on uh, more, for more inspiration I don't see James Moore on here is he in um, Nathan I, I think James might have had a last minute cancellation okay that's so... all right uh, it's James Moore from he's creative director at Falcons Creative former Imagineer he create uh, and uh, really really great guy, uh, plenty of projects to, to draw from. Um, and I'm, I'm sure you'll get, you'll get a good shake from James. Uh, Mark Spencer. Are, are you here? I'm buzzing through the names. Nope. Uh, and Mark is a creative director also at Falcons creative group. Um, and now I'd like to welcome Mike West from innovations West. Mike, good to see you on here again and uh thrilled to hear from you um hopefully in uh we can talk jungle cruise later <laughs> if you still remember the the uh, script that'd be great Freddie. <laughs> uh hi everybody uh as uh, joe said and the others i i feel very blessed to be included in this austere uh panel um it's uh it's a real privilege to to work with a lot of the the people i've known for many years and i remember that young 20 year old ryan Herman and MK and some of the other people here that have really made such a great career for themselves after starting young. Um, I, I was blessed to work with um, the original first generation of Imagineers. I was there for 25 years. And I've always said I owed it to those uh, women and men who were there, who were so generous with their time in teaching me uh, all about a business that they themselves started. So uh, I've always felt an obligation to be able to pass it on to the next generation and also just get such a kick out of working with younger people on it. Um, I spent, like I said, 25 years at WDI, another 15 years at, at Universal. And um, one of the things that's so wonderful about our industry is that no matter what your discipline, no matter what your interest is, there's usually really a place for you somewhere on the project. Mm -hmm. um, being creative doesn't always mean writing or drawing. If you're a creative finance person, you're the first person I'll go to on my project team because you have to figure out how to pay for this thing. Um, so uh, never consider the fact that you can't draw uh, a downside of I can't draw a stick figure, and I've been doing it for 42 years now. So uh, take pride in, in your own discipline and uh, just be enthusiastic about it and have fun with it. That's the main thing. And, and as I think Terry mentioned, or, or maybe it was Greg at story, don't forget that. That always has to be the driving force behind whatever you're doing. So have fun. Thank you so much, Mike. Next up, Logan's a wiki from Sally Dark Rides. Uh, he's uh, you're gonna you're gonna like uh, working with Logan. Uh, just an encouraging <laughs> heart and face. Go ahead, Logan. Thank you, Freddie. Yeah, Logan's Waki here with Sally. Uh, currently on install in Spain for the new Uncharted attraction at Port Aventura. So from my beautiful cubicle here on site. Um, Congratulations for all of you who are participating in this. This is going to be an amazing experience. Uh, prior to getting into the themed entertainment industry, I was a professor, so I am very comfortable talking with students. And uh, one of the things that really opened up my eyes to the world of themed entertainment was when I took a class with Peter Weishar 
that really showed me what all there is to offer. And like Mike touched on, there's way more than just creative. And as a project manager, I get my hands on everything. And so I'm really excited about the opportunity to see what you have, what you're presenting and provide any kind of advice from the logistical to the creative side to it all. So uh, thank you again for, for letting me be a part of this. Thank you for those students who are participating and just can't wait to see what you got to show. Awesome. Um, next up, we got our returning panelists. So that was that was the new panelists. Uh, thank you all for joining. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we have several returning panelists. Louis Alfieri, good to see you. He's principal and chief creative officer at Raven Sun Creative. Hi there, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here to participate again uh, for the third year with the program that Nate uh, and Freddie and the team have developed. Uh, I own Ravenson Creative. We're an experiential design and consulting agency working around the world. And uh, previous to starting our company 12 years ago, uh, I worked with uh, Universal as a senior creative director for a number of years. And previous to that was uh, in the fabrication space. Uh, working my way up through the industry as many of you are from from the beginning process to uh, working on major mixed-use destinations around the world uh, and what i would say to to add to everyone else's words is you know use this opportunity as a launch for your career you know this is an opportunity for you to network begin building relationships uh, with these participants that are uh, contributing their time uh, you know i'm a i am a mentor and you know, the intent is to kind of bridge connections with others, build your relationships, because this is how you'll find access points to other components and other opportunities in the industry, uh, and also form relationships with each other. I mean, you may be participating at the moment, you know, to seek an award or recognition for what you're doing, but uh, the camaraderie you have and the ability to share information is what really makes our space unique and special because uh, all of us are interdisciplinary artists and creative studios. And having that ability to engage with technologists or artists or writers is important to your, your overall development as uh, a creator, uh, as a technologist and as a developer. So I would say, you know, uh, beyond the portfolio aspect of this, really focus on the relationship building opportunity that's before you. All of you should connect with me on LinkedIn or contact me at our company. Uh, and as you should with everyone else, you know, be begin this process and leverage this opportunity to your maximum. Thank you very much for allowing me to participate again. Uh, and uh, next up, we have uh, Mark Amos, uh, Executive Vice President at JRA. Uh, are you here with us, Mark? I am. Welcome. Uh, well, thank you for this. Um, as mentioned, my name is Mark Amos. I am the Executive Vice President and Head of the uh, JRA Design Studio. I've been with the company for about 19 years where I have uh, had to endure from joining as a CAD draftsman uh, way back in the day, moving through design and production and directing over my time at JRA. Um, I am super excited to be a return uh, judge, if you will, or panelist for what we're trying to do here uh, and see the approach that all of you guys are going to take on your project. Um, I think what is very exciting is to see the the work that you guys put in um, and for our side to be able to provide some really solid feedback um, and mentorship, if you will, for a lot of the, the process that you're going to be going through, which I think this does a great job of resonating with how we do projects in-house, um, going through peer reviews, having that mentorship, um, all of which we do a lot of in the studio, uh, making sure that you guys can really invest your time in this process, knowing that you've got a pretty incredible uh, group of panelists here that are going to be able to provide you with some of that valuable feedback. I would absolutely encourage you guys to reach out. I know um, a lot in the industry is happening and there's a lot of growth opportunities. Um, and with that, I am also joined by Dana Everhart here, our AVP and head of operations. So a wonderful person to contact on our side here as well about some of those opportunities here in the future. Uh, really looking forward to the process ahead. Thank you guys. Awesome, thanks Mark. Mark has a lot of experience with IPs and brands and, and that's a huge, huge portion of what we do. Good to, good to meet you, Mark. Uh, Scott Alt, um, 
at uh, he's a managing partner at Railton Entertainment Design. Uh, yep. Mark, are you, get, jump right in. Uh, thanks for having me back again this year. I greatly enjoyed it last year. Um, we had some spirited debates amongst the panelists um, and a lot of Q&A that was really um, encouraging from the students and the projects last year. Um, and you all have a, a you know, a lot to live up to from the projects that we saw last year. There were some pretty awesome ones. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they are this year. Um, as Ryan mentioned, you know, he and I were at Imagineering um, 36 years ago. Um, and um, I fell into this industry not knowing even that it was an industry. Um, I had the good luck of being tapped on the shoulder by a young designer named Joe Rohde. Um, that brought me in and shepherded me through um, into the world of themed entertainment design. And at this point, I don't know how to do anything else. Um, and uh, <clears throat> following on to what Mark was saying about, you know, uh, you know, a lot of opportunity, one piece of advice I would have for all of you is if you don't have a passport, get one. Um, because uh, as Logan said, you know, he's sitting in Spain. Um, most of the stuff that we're doing is global. Um, there's very few projects in our backyard. Um, and uh, <clears throat> it's an exciting time coming out of uh, the pandemic. There is a lot of action. There is a lot of movement. And right now, the Middle East is the Wild West. So if you're uh, interested in traveling, there's going to be a lot of opportunities in the near future for a lot of people that are interested. Yeah, that's great. Good, good call, Scott. The the need out there to tell positive stories that uh, influence culture is great, and uh, the opportunities are not coming. They're here. Uh, Peter Cliff, CEO and founder of Conductor. Great to see you again. Hello, hello. Um, very, very glad to be back, and uh, and great to uh, meet everyone. Um, yeah, so I suppose a little bit about my background. I was uh, previously with Merlin Ent Entertainment for 12 years as their global creative director for live shows. Uh, I then worked with Holovis for a few years and then set up Conductor um, uh, about a year ago now. So we're a year in um, on that journey, which is quite exciting. Um, I suppose, uh, you know, we, we, we're at a real kind of... Um, change in the path in terms of how we develop these attractions now. And I'm really interested to see how utilization of new tools and incorporation or complete kind of abandonment of things like AI and, and AI generation for storytelling and seeing how that might be adapted. Because that's that's what we do. We create um, attractions that, that harness technology and interactivity, really trying to kind of push the boundary. So, um, you know, I, I said this last year when we when we first met the uh, the participants, we have a tendency, I think, in this industry to see similar things repeated time and time again. Um, and it's the next generation, it's you that I think are going to be the disruptors. Um, so I can't wait to see how you bring your personality into it and your own experience and how that defines um, a, a kind of new journey and new and new experiences. So, um, yeah, really, really glad to be back and can't wait to see what you get, get up to. Tremendous. Thank you so much. Uh, next up, we've got Ian, Mac, M Ian McVitie, Executive Vice President at Technifex XR. Uh, Ian, I'm, I don't see the name. No? I'm here. Oh, looked right there. Go right ahead. Sorry about that. No worries. I'm glad to be back. Uh, had a great time last year. Uh, I think as you hear some of the other panelists talk about, um, great opportunities in this industry. I started with a small company, went to Disney for almost a quarter of a century, and then back with a smallish company that started to expand into different markets that are kind of non-traditional, but they're still kind of storyline themed base. Um, my background is uh, mechanical technology engineering degree, but have had a great and fortunate opportunity to meet some amazing talented people, some of which are on this panel, to really kind of shape that that thinking. And, and you know, just because my background was technical, that didn't limit me in the abilities of things that I could do or 
things I could par participate in. Uh, Passport was probably one of the, the greatest things that I ever got uh, that allowed me to travel the world multiple times. And that cultural enlightenment uh, enrichment, you know, is, is infectious and comes into kind of the things that you do on a daily basis. The faces that you see on the screen, uh, whether you are participating or panelists, at some point in time, if you stay in the industry, you're going to run across these people. So I think it's a good idea to connect and learn from each other as you go through this. Uh, I look forward to the submissions and, you know, similar tones of um, how technology is changing today, chat, uh, GPT, AI, all this other stuff is really going to influence what the future is going to be. And hopefully it still maintains that same level of creativity with the storyline content that makes uh, amazing experiences for uh, the next generation of guests. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ian. Excited to have you here back. back. Uh, we're going to take a quick uh, break. Uh, from the panelists to talk to the professors, and we'll come right back to the panelists. And first one, I want to get back to Jamie. Hey, get you out into class. I want to give you an opportunity to speak. Uh, jump right in. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, um, Freddie. I appreciate it. And thank you to all the panelists that are here. This is uh, an amazing group of uh, panelists. I'd be interested, Nate, to maybe like add up the years of experience of everybody that's on the panel to see what what giant number that is. Um, so yeah, I'm, my name is Jamie DeRider and I'm teaching uh, entertainment design at Ringling College. And uh, we're super excited to have our first senior class this year. Um, we're in our fourth year of the curriculum. So you'll get to see our first ever senior thesis projects, hopefully some of them submitted to this, um, this showcase. And um, I think I'd like to just like add a positive note of appreciation for all the collaboration here. Um, you know, you'll see we have uh, other educators here, Peter and MK and Greg and, um, and others. And I think what's great about this industry is that it is very collaborative. And all of us at, at, in these different academia kind of seats, we've all agreed to be collaborative and not competitive. And this is one great example of how we're collaborating. Um, and I think that's a good note for all the students on the call, and that is that, you know, um, it is a highly collaborative industry, and just, you know, be prepared to network and work together and share and, you know, and help each other as we move forward. And thank you, Nate and Jesse, for putting all this together. Awesome. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, have a nice class. Uh, <laughs> we are. It's, it's, it's cruising. <laughs> Next up, I've got Professor Christopher Stapleton uh, from SCAD. Welcome aboard. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm just starting at, back at SCAD after being back in the real world. And But you know, 20 years ago, I was down at UCF looking at mixed reality and teaching digital media. But um, I'm a professor at, of themed entertainment, but it's far more than theming and far more in entertainment. I like to call it the phenomenology of the augmented imagination, but I'll leave that to my students. But uh, I've been uh, doing, starting my startup from, all, from Broadway and feature films in New York to mega theme parks for Disney, Universal, and uh, Nickelodeon. But I've been around the world applying these skill sets to other things like um, uh, operating rooms in Munich, high-tech laboratories in Tokyo, uh, social justice kind of applications and addiction recovery and cognitive uh, commutative disorder therapy. So it's amazing what our skill sets can do. And I'm coming back to the campus to really kind of show the students how many more opportunities there are. And also, you know, with high tech at a high, much higher value, uh, a salary rate, um, as long as you know how to apply it beyond the berm. So, uh, it's very exciting to take a look at the talent and being back on campus. So, and being amongst all the amazing people on this on this phone call. Wonder, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, we also have Christian Rogers from IUPUI, and he is not on here. I don't see him. Right. Good. Christian uh, is actually at a wedding currently and couldn't make it. Well, he's a great guy. Uh, been on tours with him around uh, projects, so just he's a really um, great, great friend, and uh, glad to have him as well. All right, uh, heading back into um, into the panelists, Ian. Uh, 
would you hop back on and introduce John Polk? I know he can't be here, but uh, I share who he is and what uh, he does. Uh, sure. Uh, my personation of him would not be uh, good or do justice. <laughs> Uh, but John Polk, uh, who will be joining, uh, is also a return panelist, uh, been in the industry for many decades. Uh, specialty not only includes special effects, um, but water and water effects and storytelling is coming around um, uh, quite extensively, uh, at least for us right now. So uh, he comes with a, a different slant and a different view. Uh, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, it's what the... Uh, the same kind of um, support and mentorship that we all have had, you know, uh, in our lives, in our careers, uh, if we've been in this business for a while. So uh, I know he's excited about uh, participating again uh, in this showcase. Unfortunately, he had a, a family emergency where literally 10 minutes before the call, he came in to grab his stuff to then jump on a plane. So, uh, but he'll be joining us shortly from uh, TechnFX as well. Awesome. Thank you very much. MK Haley, uh, she is uh, a great friend. I think you're, she's one of those folks who you immediately feel like a friend when you meet her. Uh, and she's also fiercely protective of students, uh, and uh, which is something I love. Uh, would you share about yourself and uh, where we're off to next with uh, these students? Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite activities that happens. And I think you can see that amongst the group as a whole. People are taking these calls from cars, uh, Ryan was like walking down a hallway to another <laughs> meeting, right? Like we want to participate in this. So um, that's that says something about the value that we find in it. Um, and it was Ms. Uh, Mark, I think, was the first person who used the word mentor. So panelists, judges, like those actually don't do justice to the relationship we have here. Everyone here is your mentor. They are interested in reviewing your work and giving you feedback now and then starting a relationship moving into the future. Um, and, and so be very mindful of that opportunity. And the reason this was set up originally, thanks, Nate, was because y'all had lost internships. You were not getting opportunities for professionals to look at your work, to be able to contribute to things above and beyond your classwork. And so Nate set this up kind of like in an emergency situation, like, ah, what are we going to do for the kids? Um, and so we put this together um, uh, so that students would have feedback on the work at any phase of the process. Right. This isn't a, a senior final capstone project. This isn't a design contest. This is what are you doing and how can we help um, to that end? Um, yeah. Yeah. We, Jesse had to do all the hard work behind the scenes. He had to put together the first review panel and process and judging system. So bless your heart, Jesse. I live in Texas now, so I can say that. Bless your heart. Um, <laughs> uh, so. To that end, in, in terms of how can we help you, um, be as specific as possible. Because if we don't know what we're reviewing, it's hard to give feedback. And we'll ask a lot about what's not there um, instead of focusing on what is. So if you say, I'm a freshman concept artist, I'm really interested in doing you know, top-down illustrations of large landscape, like, great, that's the lens I will look at. So um, that's just a matter of communicating who you are and, and what you're interested in doing. Um, and another thing that my bugaboos, you know, Nate had mentioned IP, for the most part, you have absolutely no right to use anyone else's IP. And even if your professor says you do, often you do not. Um, so the James and the Giant Peach one that Nate had mentioned, that actually does have permission from the author to use that IP. But that is your job to make sure any reviewer knows that. Like literally name it, James and the Giant Peach, use with permission. Right, because if the, your answer is, oh, it's embedded deep in my notes, I'm never gonna get to your notes. I'm not gonna look at it because I believe you don't have the rights to use it. So again, just very specifically talking about what you're doing and how and why gives us a much better opportunity to provide very useful um, feedback on that. Um, and also research, research, research. If you're doing uh, something based on the actual people or place or historical event, you better get it right. Um, mm. I want to add, last year I asked a student, do you think the blank historical society would appreciate how you're representing blank? And they went, that's a real person. It was a real person. <laughs> um, so uh, it, it's perfectly fine to say, I'm doing a farcical take on this uh, historical event. 
and then we all know it and we all have a baseline, but um, make sure that your work is as informed technically and creatively um, as whatever facts need to go by there. And um, I do straddle several universes. I was at Imagineering for about 28 years um, and also teaching that whole time. Uh, Disney made me slash let me teach. Um, Peter Weischer um, has been a mentor of mine for a long time uh, to help contribute to setting up most of the themed entertainment programs that exist in the country right now. <laughs> he helped set those up. Um, and I'm now teaching themed entertainment design at UT Austin. So um, um, participation in an event like this is like one of the single best things you can do professionally. I mean, and you all are here, so you're like not the ones who need to hear this. Um, but join a club, go to a conference, participate in an event like this, ask, how can I help you? Uh, so Mike West was one of my very first bosses in the early 90s. He and Patrick Brennan gave me this crazy assignment, like I had a job, right? But they said, what if Spaceship Earth were the Earth? Where would all the other planets and sun be on Disney World property? And how big would they be? MK, go figure that out. And so I did. And I had partners at JPL. I had done an artist in residency at JPL. So we had like a little spreadsheet, like, because first of all, that's not happening. <laughs> like, <laughs> like one of your planets is 700 miles away and 3000 <laughs> feet into the ground in a men's restroom at a sit-go station. Um, but uh, there's, there's lots of opportunities to do anything sort of above and beyond. Um, and just be, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, Professor Stapleton and I first worked together Again, early 90s at SIGGRAPH, which is an industry association for computer graphics, animation, interactive content. Professor Stapleton was one of the first ones to set up a um, interactive art experiential technical gallery type place because that was the sort of work that was being developed and there was no place to showcase that. The um, technological playground of ideas and dreams. Right. Yeah. That. Um, so, so just be aware of that. Tell your friends to do that and they're like oh but i'm so busy correct um yeah. whenever you choose to participate in something like this or volunteer at a conference you're not doing something else um but in the long run these little bitty maybe short hits they add up to a lot um and so that's that's a very big deal over time mm -hmm. um and also none of us are scary so if we if we like tell you your spelling is terrible it's it's from the heart it's, it's because we want you to fix your spelling. <laughs> it's not because we're mean, we're mad at you. Um, so just reach out. Any single person here, like roll, roll your little mouse over them. Their names come up, um, except Ian, who is keeping his last name off his picture. Um, uh, reach out to every single one of those people. Not intentionally. <laughs> he'll, he'll fix it. Uh, well, uh, good. There's only two more. They're not with us today. Jason McManus at ThinkWell. Um, the, uh, he really is able to pull off the white sunglasses. He's one of the coolest guys uh, in our industry. We really like having him around and he has his own train, like full narrow gauge train. It's awesome. Uh, and Jessica Piotti, she's a concept artist, attractions and, uh, uh, theme park designer. So, um, we're, um, she, and she's, she's, uh, she's really, she's really cool. You guys are going to love uh, working with her along the way as well. So, wow, it is ele uh, 1159 my time, 1059 Pacific. We did the introductions within an hour, which I think is a fantastic accomplishment. Give yourselves a hand. You did an uh, amazing job on that. We're going to now transition into a bit of a Q&A uh, about the showcase. Um, we want all of the students to have an opportunity to ask some questions bounce it off of the panelists, I mean the mentors, uh, and we're going to um, really, really try to uh, dig through this. I have a couple rules for you, uh, and I want to, the rules are here because of some sensitivities, so uh, do me a favor and understand why. First, here's the why. Last time, we had these amazing panelists on here, and uh, a couple panelists were the focus of some people's attention, and so some sat, sat here for an hour and didn't have an opportunity to speak or give feedback. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, some of the students had more questions, and so we want to be sensitive to that, give everybody an opportunity if they want to. So for the uh, for the panelists, mentors, I would love it if you would take yourselves off of mute 
and feel free, just like when MK was just speaking and Professor Christopher uh, uh, jumped in and spoke, feel free to bounce, jump in. You're, you don't have to be called on to speak. We want you to be able to uh, jump in and say something as needed. Uh, uh, and then for the students, please raise your hand and we'll definitely call on it. And you'll raise your hand using the reactions at the bottom of your Zoom window. So uh, here's an example. I am, oh, wait a minute. I am raising my hand. Do you see it on the screen? So I'll be watching for that to call on you. And uh, all of our mentors, please feel free to answer. We'll, we'll, we'll be polite about it. I'll try and help uh, move that along. But um, let's try to keep this portion. We're going to try and keep it on questions about the uh, about the showcase. Uh, but as we go, if you do have a, a question uh, along the lines of somebody's particular project that uh, uh, is in the past, we'd love to give you an opportunity to speak uh, about that as well. So I'm lowering my hand and I'm going to look for uh, a question from any of the students. If I could make a comment real fast, yes, um, I, I will say um, in years past, we separated it between graduate students and um, and seniors and then underclassmen, et cetera. It, I think it was graduates and interns, junior and senior, freshman and sophomore. This year, we're simply going to put everyone in one group. The difference is, is that the scores will be weighted. So that also includes if you're in a team versus an individual. So an individual will be weighted a little bit heavier than a team. Work, a team. So the team has to work harder to make up for the fact that they're on a team. Uh, Adrian Gutierrez, uh, last year, or two years ago, won as an individual, best in show. So it's absolutely possible to overcome all the teamwork. And if you're a freshman individual, you have a slight advantage over a team of graduates and interns. So I just wanted to make that, that point clear that you will be uh, in your category, which is you know technical or uh, master planning, let's say, or show writing, storytelling, that kind of thing. So you pick your category, you, you compete against everyone in there, and then you'll be weighted based on your individual uh, level of progression in your studies. Fantastic. I know some of the uh, uh, mentors had to jump off as well. So we got a, um, you, if you have a question directed to somebody in specific, um, make sure they're still on. All right, who's got a question? This is a Q and A. It's good, we're answering questions. Move on. All right, that's okay. Um, let's see here. I think that you've really laid out a pretty good. Oh, I just saw a hand. Oh yeah, shit. Four up. Oh, I do. There they are. They're hiding up front. All right. Uh, let's let's start with Stacia. Um. So my question is sort of uh, my project has multiple iterations that I have videos and coding of. Should I split that up into video and code of each project for my deliverable, or would you guys prefer if I focus on one instance of it working? What do you mean coding? Um, am I allowed to like describe my project? A little bit. <laughs> uh, it runs off of an inter a sensor that controls various parameters and leads to an interactive output. I would recommend that you show the finished product of it working and then talk about the process that you went through to get it working. I'm always interested in the process that people go through because that helps me understand their thinking process. Okay. You might want to also storyboard the sequential guest experience so that a viewer can quickly understand and, and surmise, you know, what, what you're doing before you show what's happening. It just sort of rounds out the overall, you know, relaying of the information. Yeah, I, I think I would also, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I would also just really recommend that you, you highlight what the experience component part of that is so that it's not just an exercise in tech for, a good tech sake. So I think I totally agree with what Greg's saying, you know, storyboarding, outlining a narrative treatment that would 
talk about how it becomes a communication device and examples of what that communication could be for an experience so that it's not just that other area of focus. Okay, cool. Thank you. I, I would also say that if if you do want any feedback on on your coding, coding methodology, and maybe some of your kind of UX and that that kind of side of things, and from a more, from a more technical standpoint, that's also something that we can kind of take a look at and uh, maybe give you some feedback on. Because I think there is a nuance in terms of designing and and generating code within a themed entertainment environment, um, and the way that kind of technology is adapted and interface interfaces with those those experiences. That would be really helpful. It's currently written in Max, which is not the most uh, UI UX or end user looking at it friendly. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Spencer. Hello, thank you all for uh, being here. Um, I apologize that this is uh, written and answered in the, in, in the instructions. I haven't had a chance to fully go through all of it. Um, but uh, I was curious, I'm, I've been a part of a, a club which have worked on lots of projects and would be uh, very interested in this in this uh, uh, showcase. I also have my senior thesis that I've been working on. Are you allowed to be a part of two projects in that way? Or uh, would that qualify me as like two entries? And can I not do that? We uh, purposely overstaffed on panelists this year, and so go ahead and submit away. Uh, we actually had a couple people, a couple panelists we had to turn down because of, it's like we've got too many. Um, but yeah, uh, but yeah, one but, of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> Freddie. I'm not uh, hurt. I'm not hurt. Not hurt. Well, we freed up your time is what we did, Freddie. You can always, we might draft you. We'll see. But yeah, go ahead, guys. Uh, submit more than one if you need to, and then um, and we'll we'll divvy it up. It's always a guessing game on our end. How many entries are we going to have? How many panelists do we need? How many panelists can we get? And so we're trying to, you know, all of our panelists came in late, and and then the projects came in even later. So it was kind of like, are we going to have enough? And so we're doing our best. But yeah, for now we have enough of uh, a um, uh, capacity to score projects. That feel free to submit more than one. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, Valerie. Uh, hi. Uh, I just want to say thanks so much for everyone for taking the time to be here. This is really cool to be a part of a project like this. Um, so my question was, if we're going to be submitting a... Sorry? Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, my question was, if we're going to be submitting a larger group project, do you prefer to see sort of the highlights or sort of our most polished pieces, or would you like to see a more thorough kind of step-by-step -step going through every, basically every piece of work that we've done for the project, even if it's things that are like elevations or process sketches? I think if you help explain your project and, and the story, I would say whatever will help you get the point, get your project across in the story. Um, one thing overall for everybody related to that is realize that none of us know anything about the story that you're telling. So make sure, please, please, please make sure that you clearly explain what the guest experience is supposed to be before you launch in to a lot of drawings and, and technical things, because I've been part of these things before and not this one, but other things and students, they know it up here, but they don't realize we don't know what it is. And they launch in the middle of something and we have no idea where you're coming from. So whether you're going to start with simple drawings or you're going to go into the technical aspects right up front say state very clearly what the guest experience is supposed to be and what you're trying to provide for the guests that's so important to get across to us right away but tell us what the big idea is but your overriding precept that you then develop several concepts to answer to right like what answer the question what what is it mm -hmm. and then the delivery of how is it, which is the narrative. Once we know those two things, then it's much easier for us to look at a bunch of drawings. Got it. I, I would add to that too. I think one of the things MK and I really had some great discussions about in the submissions last year was if you've got supporting information, drop it in into an appendix. Um, you know, keep your, your presentation package concise and to the point. You know, you do want to definitely nail down what the narrative is, the overall experience, tick all the boxes of the requirements of the proposal submission. But then 
as you get into the validation behind it, sure, drop all that stuff into another um, subtext, if you will, at the bottom, so that if there's more there that kind of leads to your conclusion, we can go back in and have a deeper dive in that. Well, that makes sense. Thank you. Anybody else want to respond to that? I think going back to Stacia's uh, question, uh, where uh, talking about the technical stuff, it it it'll be easier to understand the details of what you're talking about if you begin with that story uh, guest experience. That's very insightful. Thanks, everybody. Holly, would you share us your question? Hi. Um. So my question is. Uh, you would think I'd know it based on me just waiting here to say it, but, um, so on the instructions, it says that submissions have to have been, um, uh, like had to been part of assigned coursework or under supervision of a faculty member. If I wanted to submit something that I did for a competition, but it hasn't been supervised under a faculty member because I'm a theater major, so none of my classes will have anything related to theme parks or like themed attractions. I was wondering if that would be okay. Hmm. That'll absolutely be okay. Um, there's really a couple tracks. And when we started this with Jesse, some of them are, we, we had track A and track B. Track A would be, you know, this is going to be our class with our, our entire project that, that takes all semester. And then that will be presented. And then the other option, the track B would be just you can submit whatever you want, but you have to be a student so uh, in a program. So uh, in general, if it's related to the topic and you feel like it would be a good fit and it would help you in your career uh, to network and have, have feedback, go ahead and put it up. We want to see your stuff. It's a showcase. And so as long as you keep it in mind that that's, that's what the intention is, to showcase your skills, then um, we have a big tent and we'd love to have you. Okay, yeah, cool. Professor Stapleton referred to this as well as how he's expanding the program at SCAD. Um, you had mentioned, oh, it's theater, so it has nothing to do with themed entertainment. Theater has everything to do with themed entertainment. Uh, museums, restaurants, archives, um, aquariums, theme parks, arcades, like this is a giant universe we work in, memorials. Um, so don't ever think that the work you're doing is not relevant or connected, it for sure is. Yeah, all of our, <laughs> the, all, most of the uh, original parks that we are around were involved in sort of taking theater and putting it into space around you. Uh, great job. Thank you. Andrew. Uh, hi, yeah. Uh, first, wanted to thank all the panelists for, for being part of this. It was so awesome. Um, but second, I was wondering, um, for submitting a group project where um, different members of the group are coming from sort of different specialties. Uh, what would you recommend in terms of finding the, um, the sort of subject area to submit to? Um, sort of what what is the sum total of us or or how, how would you recommend that? <laughs> oh, oh, Nathan, did you have a I think that really, uh, I'd like to, I was quiet on purpose, but um, if anyone else <laughs> has, wants to speak, but, um, but I think it, it basically is just finding your, finding your beat. What, what is your, what's the center of gravity of, of your group? Um, I think that's the best way I could describe it. Just find your voice. And, um, and if you feel like overall it hits in a lot of areas, but you want to be known as a project that tries to solve something technical, then put it in the technical area. And then if it's something that's groundbreaking, I mean, just find the best category that best sums up what you're trying to do. And, and I'll be quiet and let someone else answer also. Well, we also get that we're asking you, a group of students, to submit something that uh, in industry, like maybe up to 200 people contributed to, right? So, so we get that. We also get that it takes a village to put something together, your technical team, your creative team, your HR team, your accounting team. And so uh, there's nobody here who's looking at your work who doesn't understand those disciplines, um, you know, you may feel torn about which button to click to say what it is, but every single person looking at your submissions knows every single bit and bob that's included in it. So um, 
So don't feel as if, oh no, I submitted to the computer science person and they won't get story. They do. I like the category of innovation. Like all the projects should be innovative, right? So that's an easy one. <laughs> Okay, Mitchell. Hello, can you all hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, my project did have a team, um, but I am the only one who's interested in pursuing this opportunity. So should I sign up as a team and still list their names or do I sign up as an individual? Legally, it's a team. If anyone else contributed to this aside from you or strip out just your work and present that. Um, and then maybe if you're a nice a nice student, you'll share our feedback with them. <laughs> but uh, um, but uh, you wanna make sure that everyone who contributed is uh, attributed on the submission. Great. Thank you for answering. Yeah, maybe, maybe somebody can speak to uh, how teams uh, are working together. Uh, you know, we've seen some projects come in where uh, you can tell that there was a one sort of collected mind working on the whole thing. So it comes in as, as a cohesive one and some that uh, have different elements. And so they're all sort of separated out. Um, panelists, talk about how uh, you think those teams should work together as, as they're proceeding through the process. Make sure you're all on the same page so you don't get five, six different ideas on it. I mean, it, that sounds oversimplified, but it's really important because sometimes if you're working on concept and somebody else is working on the technology, you, you diverge into two different paths and you don't realize it till you try to get it back together again. So if you are working with a team, there needs to be somebody that's kind of coordinating the whole thing to make sure everybody's following the same path. That's all. It, it's good to have a team, but Projects usually are not a democratic process that you learn in the real world. There's somebody in charge and somebody that's going to make a decision. And if it's not somebody in your team, it's somebody above that person on the team. So make sure it's a it's a um, it's coordinated coordinated effort with somebody that knows all the pieces that have to come together and how they have to fit. Yeah, uh, Greg. Greg mentioned the big idea and that the big idea would should guide. Uh, throughout. Uh, it is 12 or 12, 17, my time. Uh, I don't, I know we had a 12, uh, a 10, 15, sorry, 11, 15 Pacific uh, cut off. If anybody would like to hang around, you're welcome. But for those of you who made a commitment to be here until that time, you're, you are free to go, but we're grateful and we're grateful for everybody who came on board. Again, we'll, we'll hang around for another 15 minutes or so if there's more questions. Uh, and uh, ha happy to have you. Well, and also please feel to reach out as individuals. If after this, you're like, nope, turns out this isn't for me, but I am looking for feedback or mentorship in this area. Almost everyone on this call is either that person or can connect you to that person. You know, I have a special focus in accessibility in theme parks. That's not one of the categories of submission, uh, maybe innovation, um, but we all know people who are specialists in that and we can say, oh, let's just, just make a little love connection and connect you with that person. Whether it's this competition or just the relationships here, um, there's something for everyone in every focus area. So just, just ask. Awesome. Are there any other questions uh, with regard to the showcase or anything uh, personal you want to connect with any of our mentors as well? And also at the same time, if any of the mentors have have additional advice that's uh, connecting you on on this that or that you thought might be helpful, please do jump in. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, I've been using a lot of AI as ideation work in references um, and so forth. Uh, do you have a position on work uh, with AI used as a tool, not necessarily as a crutch? Create it like another team member and properly attribute it. Um, don't give me an AI, AI illustration if you are marketing yourself as an illustrator, right? I need to understand that you have that foundational skill set. Um, but one of my students is a uh, music sound comp composer. He wants to do um, 
movie and video game soundtracks, but he didn't want to steal anything off the internet because there's IP issues. So he had AI write a script. It's gloriously bananas. Um, and then he is doing, and, and that's, I think, a perfect use of AI. He's not marketing it as his skill set. He's using it as the stuff around his stuff. So in different programs, we'll have different policies, right? So we'll have students coming from different places. Just make sure that you properly attribute it and that it is not um, replacing a skill set that you're asking us to evaluate. Yeah. Attributing is a tricky question. I usually have them write down what their intent was, what their prompts were, and then what platform they use, just so that they can we can see how they use it as a tool, uh, because there's still the courts out on on attribution, you know, attributing wh whose work is that. <laughs> um, well, what a time to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a tool because you know we're starting to look at AI in, in as a background for story, not only a story uh, programming. So you know it, it is a real tool. So we wanted to grapple with it. Do you have a, a suggested as a, an entry, a way to attribute that? Um, do you have a standard or, 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 you know, advice? I mean, this is really only the second semester. It's even been on the radar for me in student work. And so right now I'll have students attribute it and I will, like you said, like, I don't get the whole picture, right? Tell me, like you said, why you used it, why you thought it was a good tool. Is this replacing a skill set that I wanted to see from you? Um, and mostly students get it in the first pass. Um, but until I see more examples of it, I won't have a super robust um, definition of how I need to see it submitted. Okay. We use it in brainstorming a lot. Yeah. Um, you know, in the old days, I used to bring magazines and chop them up and throw pictures yep. all over the table. Um, and, and now um, AI is filling some of that hole. Like, what do hedgehogs look like? And then a thousand hedgehogs come up. Um, and we're starting to use working with iterations and a conversation, if you will, because these students are working alone a lot of times and they don't have a team to bounce ideas off of. So AI is starting to work as kind of a, a surrogate team to, 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 you know, for the ideation process. I have one Chinese student who's helping it teach her how to speak English, um, which is very clever, very creative. So that's awesome. So yeah, it's just some really, they're, they're grabbing onto it and doing some neat things, but um, we could help them figure out how to use that appropriately. Awesome. Yeah, great question. Sarah. Hi, so just while we're on the subject, subject um, correct, of correctly attributing things to where they belong, something that I was thinking about is um, I'm going to be entering the, the show writing and storytelling category in Part of the way that I was taught to make a beat sheet was by including visual references, but was told since in the industry, beat sheets are more of internal documents rather than something that gets published, that it's not necessary to credit where the pictures are from. And I was wondering if anybody had any commentary about that, because it feels like if I'm turning it in for this specifically, I should be including those photo attributes. <laughs> I say yes, right? Because again, how you use these tools as a professional are different than as a student. As a student, we're presuming you're getting a foundational expertise than actual craft. Um, and as you move forward, those relationships will be different between you and your teammates, you and your client. Um, but for the purposes of this, yes, we'd like to know um, you did an image search. I mean, and by the way, we do that all the time in industry. We'll stick up a a bulletin board with 5,000 Cirque du Soleil pictures because we're thinking about circuses um, and nobody has written in the corner. FYI, these were pulled from the internet. Um, but for the purposes of this, as a student, I think communicating your process is very important. Thank you. Yeah, in the industry, we we cheat. We, we, we take things and use them as inspiration, but it's not like that gets presented to the client, right? Like you, there's there's back of house imaging reference, and then there's front house uh, presentational modes of of presenting things, and they're two different worlds, you know. So, but yeah, I, I like what you said, MK. It makes sense to acknowledge it <clears throat> because then it'll just help you in the long run. You know, you'll, you'll have an understanding of your your own process in the same at the same time. Great. I meant. 
I hope the music is not too loud. So I, I want to ask about the innovation um, category. So basically, for example, if my team create a new way to optimize um, pedestrian flow or like um, guest flow throughout the park, does that count as master planning or innovation? Hmm. That is a good uh, good question. Um, we can always edit the category once we see it. Um, yeah, innovation is supposed to be kind of a catch-all. Um, that would probably be under placemaking and master planning. That that's my gut. But if you know, you can submit to whichever one you want. If you want advice, um, Jesse, especially because he's coming up with the the scoring rubric, um, will be happy to. In, uh, answer your questions. And if you'll reach out to me, Nate at themedattraction.com, I can put you guys in touch too. But I, my, my gut is that it'll be under master planning and placemaking. And also getting back to my, and this is the hill I'll die on, do your research, right? Like do not put a historical figure in a tutu. Um, um, when you said we invented a new way, are you sure? This industry has done lots and lots of work on that. It's not very sexy. It's often published at um, very niche conferences. Um, so you don't want to put something in front of us and said, ta-da. And we're like, yo, no, yeah, we've been doing that for 40 years. Um, so, so do your research on what has existed before, what maybe informed your, what problems you're trying to solve um, before you use a word like we invented or first ever. Right, right. We're Do done. we define innovation? Because that's different from invention and ideation. So. Or iteration. <laughs> um, so an innovation, I, I see that as not invention where you create a new capability, but it's how it's been adopted in its application. Um, and so I, I, you know, it'd be interesting because it's a showcase, a good learning opportunity to really kind of look at these variations. That might be something that might be a little, looked at because mm -hmm. I think the user is the ultimate innovator versus the inventor yeah how it's applied is is whether yeah. it's just a patent on a shelf that nobody sees um, yeah. or how it impacts us and this is the what Nathan say third year of this every year it changes based upon how it goes so um uh, so even in midstream, things might be changed if it looks as if the categories aren't making sense or the students are needing different types of feedback or for, for next season. But uh, And also because we weren't thinking about AI last year, right? there's always something new getting chucked into the mix. Um, so no one needs to think of this as a, as a static thing. We'll, we'll morph so that we just continue to provide um, um, the original intent, which is professional mentorship to students. Mm -hmm. That helped me. Good. Yeah. yeah, and if I could jump in, the uh, the secret here is that we're. Uh, I'll give you an example. John, I was talking to John Polk at IAPA. He says, "Listen, you know, Jason McManus just came through with some just amazing insights uh, from a from a you know an art director's point of view, and it was just it blew me away because this is not my expertise. So the idea is that we're trying to track you into areas that might be useful to a company." So, for example, if you're an architect, do master planning, um, regardless of how your project fits, because we're trying to, to get you networked with folks that will help you think along the lines of a master planner. If you're a, a writer, put your stuff in the in the show writer so we can have show writers looking at you, if that makes sense. So that's kind of the, the overarching intention is to match skill sets with, you know, experts with, with students in, in various disciplines. So we're trying to come up with broad categories that can sort of funnel you into the right areas where it will, will do you the best good in terms of your later career, in terms of them being able to give you internships, hiring you, or just being a good connection. So I hope that makes sense. Is it also possible to have um, two preference of the category, like combine it together? For example, if I'm, a, I'm an engineer and my friend is an architect um, and we, we, don't, we don't agree on which category you put in. I think Two we have to- categories or just one? Maybe. You, we're gonna do one category per submission. Um, and it's, um, it's based on, well, remember there's also best in show. So um, you could 
it, it, at the end of the day, that it's not going to matter too much because your work's going to be displayed, et cetera. So if you have a more specific question, if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty, I think Jesse can probably come up with an idea. He had to run to a meeting, but um, but we can we can help guide you in that. So. So stay tuned and we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge down the road. Well, thank you all very much. It, uh, we, we got to an hour and a half. We're really grateful for your time. Uh, and uh, as MK has uh, put a bow on over and over again, please do reach out to each one of us, the panelists on uh, LinkedIn with further questions. Uh, the uh, focus team here it has been Nathan and Jesse Cam. Uh, so for specific showcase items that you'd like to reach out to, uh, I know uh, they'll be open to those in it and uh, MK would be as well. So uh, don't, don't be shy. Uh, thank you so much for being part of this. Um, I, wish, I wish we were all in one place so we could just kind of, the doors would open and we would all spill out and get coffee together. Uh, but uh, that's that's for another event. Uh, hopefully very soon we get to meet in person. Yeah, and Freddie just said, don't be shy. And if you're all like, well, I am, we have tools for that as well. We can help that's you right. develop better practices to, to get past that. Yeah, exactly. And that can be just a, a, a quick text or a note. We just, we do want to help and, and be your, your uh, bridge. All right. Thank you so much for coming and we'll see you very, very soon. Thank you, everyone.